I'm Sarah Gardner, and you thought sugar just came from sugar cane. Well, find out how they're turning sugar beets into the sweet stuff. I'm Jason Schultz. It's harvest time in the Red River Valley, and there's no slowing down when you've got to get the sugar beets out of the ground. to the land. There are no city streetlights to guide Neil Rockstad's pickup truck at this hour. Just him, his dog, and the eerie quiet of rural Minnesota at 1 a.m. With his wife and family soundly sleeping, Neil is getting ready for another long day. There's oil to be checked in the engine and air pressure to check in the tires. It's sugar beet harvest season in an area called the Red River Valley. And that means very little rest for farmers and the drivers who haul tons of beets. The Red River Valley is one of a handful of sugar beet growing areas in the U.S. It's a large swath of land that runs from western Minnesota to eastern North Dakota. In the field and at sugar processing factories across the area, it means moving non-stop until the beets are out of the ground and being turned into sweet sugar. not think of sugar coming from these oversized white beets, but that's exactly what happens once they get to the factory. It's a chemical process that is actually similar to getting sugar from sugar cane. Hundreds of workers will be required to help truck and pile the beets and turn them into sugar, and more are needed to make sure things run as smoothly as possible. If it all doesn't work out as planned, instead of sugar on the shelves, these farmers could lose millions of dollars. It all requires the perfect storm of weather, work, and willpower. And it all begins in the field with farmers like Neil Rockstad. Outside of the lights of your, you know, your rig here, it's just pitch black. There's just nothing out there. Pitch black except for the stars. and. And if the moon should happen to come up, although I think the moon is coming up after the sun today. Uh, how are you staying, how do you stay awake out here at this hour? Uh, drink lots of coffee, listen to the radio, and take a few, few naps when nobody's looking. <laughs> Neil carefully follows the rows of sugar beets while driving his tractor. The leafy tops of the sugar beet plants are mowed off before Neil comes along with his digger. The top of the bead is sliced off so it's ready to be easily popped out of the ground. The digger that he's pulling must be lined up just right to pull the beads out of the ground. And you could say plucking the beads out of the ground. They lift them onto the grab rolls. The purpose of the grab rolls is to clean the mud, separate the mud from the beads or the dirt from the beads, and then to convey the beads to the back of the, of the harvester. From there, they, 
they fall into the Ferris wheel, and they make a big trip up to the top of the Ferris wheel, get dropped onto an elevator chain and conveyed out to the truck. Neil is a third generation sugar beet farmer, following in the steps of his grandfather and uncle. He grows beets for American Crystal Sugar. The company is actually a cooperative of 2,800 growers who raise more than 400,000 acres of sugar beets. That's more than 10 million tons. So the sun's not even going to be up for a few hours, and yet right. you've been out here already pulling these things out of the ground. Right, right. We harvest sugar beets 24 hours a day. And you got to get them out of the ground, right? That's yep. the deal. Yep, night or day. We, uh, we keep rolling as long as the weather cooperates with us, lets us do it. And this is a beet. Yep. This is this a sugar is, beet. This right is here. a sugar beet, an average size sugar beet that you'd find in, in any uh, grower's field at, at harvest time. Some are quite a bit larger, some are smaller. but And it's pretty heavy. I mean, it's, yeah. there's a lot of mass yeah, to this sure thing. Yeah, sure there is. Yep. And it's loaded with sugar, essentially. You get the sugar right. out of this thing yep. in the chemical process. Yep. Once, it's, uh, once it goes into the factory, it goes in like this and comes out the other end as pure granulated sugar, just like you have on your kitchen table. Fortunately, we've had a few days of, uh, of drier weather and the field conditions are, are pretty nice right where I'm at. Some people are, aren't so fortunate right now. But uh, when, it's, when it's muddy, we're, our harvester is in the dirt, it's a root crop, and it's, uh, it's, it's really a, a pain to harvest the beets. We get it done, but it's a, it's a nuisance and it's kind of a mess. And while nice warm weather would seem ideal for any harvest, for sugar beets it actually can create problems. While it's cool in these overnight hours, a string of warm sunny days has actually warmed up the internal temperature of the beets. We'll explain why that's a problem in a minute, but for farmers like Neil it means stopping down the harvest. Because there are hundreds of thousands of beets being harvested in a small time, to have an orderly process, farmers like Neil are assigned harvesting shifts. Neil started at 2 a.m. and will continue until 2 p.m. unless he gets a weather shutdown order from the sugar cooperative. If, if they're going to shut down at a certain hour, we all get a, a text message on our telephone. We all know at exactly the same time. And for the past few days, Neil and the other farmers have been stopping down at noon not starting up until it cools off at midnight. It can be frustrating. Uh, you know, here you might have a beautiful day, the sun is shining, and uh, maybe there's rain in the forecast two days from now, but you, you have to shut down because the beet temperature is too warm. It's not just farmers burning the midnight oil. I visited the American Crystal Sugar Factory in Hillsboro, North Dakota, where the beets are coming in by the truckload. and the bags of sugar are coming out. Randy Axman is the plant manager. This facility is one of six American Crystal Sugar factories. Farmers either bring their beets to piling sites around the area or the closest factory. You have likely heard of sugar from sugar cane, and the process to make sugar from beets isn't much different than making it from cane. The first step in the processing facility is washing of the beets. The beets are sliced into french fry sized pieces and then they get soaked in hot water to get the sugar inside. That sugar, or sucrose, gets purified, evaporated, filtered, and then spun around in a centrifuge. And finally, you've got sugar. There is an average time from when the beets enter the entry point in the process. It's approximately 16 to 20 hours before you see crystallized sugar product. Chemically, there is very little difference between cane and beet sugar, although some bakers do prefer the cane variety. Back on the farm, they've been at it for several hours, and the sun still hasn't come up. By now, his coffee is as cold as the air outside but Adam Mund has to stay sharp. He's got to keep his open box truck lined up just right so the waterfall of thousands of beets coming off the conveyor lands in the truck, not on the ground. You can't stray too far from this tractor, can you? No, 
I end up getting too far away, we're going to end up having beats all over the field, and we don't really want that. They're kind of valuable. And Neil won't like that one bit. No. <laughs> Pretty amazing. I mean, with all the equipment it takes and the, the, the sheer number of people that it, that American Crystal alone employs, is pretty staggering. Like we were talking about yesterday, how with all the temporary work, people literally schedule their vacations around beet harvest so they can come and drive or work the piler or work the roto beater, whatever they gotta do. So, but I definitely enjoy it. The shift's kind of rough, 2 a.m. to 2 p.m. <laughs> that is but, not uh, a good shift. No, um, but uh, one of my coworkers kind of made, made a good point on the first day that by the time you're starting to get pretty run down and tired, the sun is coming up. So you're looking forward to that sun coming up to keep you awake. And so, and then from there on out, it's smooth sailing. Is this your tired time right right now? Yeah, kind of in the gap between when I run out of coffee and between when the sun comes up. Right now we're headed to the beat piler, which is maybe three or four miles away. How many trips a day will you make there to the beat pile? Um, it usually averages out to be about one an hour. Um, on a good day, one of the first days we started, all the you know the fields were good. The piler wasn't backed up. Actually got 18 loads in a 12-hour shift, but that's fairly rare. So that's like a lot of trips back and forth. Yeah, we got laid off this summer doing concrete, and you know, the economy kind of got my boss and got laid off and was looking for work come fall and they actually put up a note in the hardware store and Neil saw it and gave me a call and was willing to work with me even though I didn't have any experience and kind of showed me the ropes and here I am. <laughs> that turned out to be pretty good. Pretty good deal that he, he uh, had some faith in you I guess. Yeah, yeah, it worked out really well. It was a pretty good guy willing to teach you. We got a question he'll answer for you, so that's always nice. So like a lot of people, when the economy went south, you find yourself out of work, essentially. Yeah, pretty much, especially with, you know, construction. They, the, the Fargo, Moorhead metro area, they say hasn't been, you know, hit by the economy as bad as some areas of the, of the nation, but, you know, construction still slows down. And that hurts a lot of guys, especially the smaller guys. Yeah. So, but good thing, you know, like, like I was saying before, the beet harvest employs so many people that it doesn't matter what the economy's doing, the crop's got to come in. As the sun rises, the rest of the folks here start showing signs of life. Neil Rockstad's wife, Elizabeth, is on her way to her job teaching at the local high school. And if any of those sugar beet truck drivers want another quick cup of coffee, well, Roberta Hedervig's Halstead Cafe is open for business. This is the West Ada Piling Station, where farmers are bringing in their sugar beets round the clock right now. In fact, hey Sarah, what's going on? Hey Jason, how are you? Good. I you went out the farm. I got about 15 tons of beets ready to dump on this pile. <laughs> it's just a small dent. Oh yeah, just a very small dent. In You've been fact, busy. yeah, you know, we were at the uh, processing plant, and it occurred to me while we were there watching the trucks and the big equipment and the people go every which way. But this is really a well-orchestrated dance, getting the crops from the field to the piling site and then onto the processing plant. And I'm amazed at how much weather plays a critical factor. I mean, they got to get these beets on this pile before Mother Nature says, shut it down. Speaking of which, oh yeah, I better, better get, get back going. to the truck. All right, <laughs> you're well, holding up the process. Yeah, I can't do that anymore. I'll check in with you later. Sounds good. All right, let's get these on the pile. You ready to go? Let's go. See you, Sarah. There are millions of beets stacked four stories high. It's truly a mountain of beets. 
So these are massive piles of beets. How many tons of beets are in these piles? In this pile here, we probably have 70,000 ton approximately. For the total site that we're at today, 140,000 ton. It's not one of our largest stations, but uh, a good chunk of beets. This site can handle about 40 trucks an hour at all hours. Our goal, though, is to turn these guys around in 15 minutes. So they weigh in and weigh out, you dump their load and weigh out in about 15 minutes. The beets will be piled at sites like this across the area through the upcoming winter months. The cool temperatures keep the beets from rotting. But if the beets go into the pile too warm or too cold, it could slowly cause them to decay. And with the beet piles here worth about $10 million each, that's not something anybody wants. It could mean a giant section of the beets is unusable for sugar. So checking the beet temperature is critical. So we have a window basically of about 28 degrees where the roots will start to freeze up to about 65 degrees. We have to operate within that window. Anything outside that window will have to shut down. And today the temperature is getting too close to that 65 degree danger zone. So another heat shutdown could be in the works. And with warm weather in the forecast for the next few days, it could be extended. That wouldn't be good news for farmers itching to get their crop out of the ground. The longer they wait, the more chance that rain, cold, or even snow could cause problems. Now during the day, it's supposed to be warm today. We'll actually probe the beets with the thermometer and watch the temps as they come in. When we see them start to climb, we can shut down harvest then. The shutdown information is so important that the local radio station has a daily sugar beet report. And today, the call has to be made. We have the latest from American Crystal Sugar Company of Hillsboro. Industry-wide, the shutdown will be at noon today because of heat. And shutting down the pile again isn't just bad news for farmers. About 13,000 people are needed to help bring in the harvest. Drivers and workers at the piling sites all feel the impact. Workers like Gerald Maxwell, he and his brother are retired, but drive up from Florida in their RVs each year to help out with the beet harvest. They got a campgrounds over here in Hillsboro, very nice, full hookups. They pay the campgrounds for us so we don't have to be responsible for that. And we get my brother here and a couple other friends from in camper clubs are together. So we kind of, if we're not working, we're kind of enjoying each other. We're going out to supper and having a barbecue and whatever, you know. When we're not working, like today, we'll, we'll get off early today, so we'll probably have a steak fry when we get home tonight. Am I invited? <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> I'm going to come for dinner. Okay. And Gerald isn't the only one on a working vacation. The harvest requires such a large workforce that hundreds of temporary workers will come from across the country to help out. Okay, so are you going to come back for more next year? Oh, I'm sure we will. My brother Will and I will come back, yeah, yeah. And the other families that are up here with us will come back. They all seem to, they kind of say sometimes, oh, we're not going to do that again. Next fall, we're up here. <laughs> do your family members try to tell you, hey, look, you're supposed to be taking it easy. Why my, are you working? My sons and my daughter are wondering what I'm doing up here, exactly. <laughs> but it's, it's something, it breaks up our, our, uh, our year, you know, and it's good for us to do, to do something. We don't want to be sitting around all the time. At the Halstead Cafe, the lunch rush is on, such as it is in this town of just over 500. It's hard for Roberta Hedervig to predict just how many customers she'll get during sugar beet season. If the crews are going strong in the fields, well, they're not stopping for a home-cooked lunch. But if the weather has put a stop to harvesting, well, she'll expect a crowd. There's a lot more orders where um, people have a group of of workers to feed out in the field. Roberta's connection to sugar beet farmers is more than just serving up their daily special. She grew up cooking for the workers on her family's sugar beet farm. I was mom's helper, so I was in the, in the house and it, if there was eight people or 20 people to feed, we fed them. So, and sometimes it was three meals a day. It's a higher energy level. Um, um, everybody's kind of geared up and um, 
you know, you hope everything goes safely and um, that we can get the crop off without there being any major glitches. Now Roberta's mom helps her in the kitchen at the restaurant. Back in Ada, Roberta's husband Bob is hard at work at the local co-op. There are tires to change, and this time of year, he's on call 24 hours a day. A lot of times it's real busy, sometimes it's fairly quiet. When it's been nice now, the, the guys are shut down with the harvest during the day, and they got time to look at stuff and check it, get it in a little better shape. Changing a tire may not seem like a big deal by itself, but across this region, the economic impact of this harvest adds up quickly. We're talking upwards of $3 billion. You're a busy guy this yeah. time of year. Yeah, I am. I'm on call 24-7. Local farm equipment dealer Roger Hansen will be working on harvesting equipment day and night over the next four weeks. Last year, Roger put 9,000 miles on his truck driving to farm fields for repairs. That kind of support is critical for farmers like David Ahrens. He's getting his harvester repaired today. And how important is it for you to have everything running, you know, tip top this time of year during the sugar beet harvest? Very important. Because if you lose a piece of equipment, what would it do to you? Well, this thing, without this, I don't do anything. Or D, a color made by mixing three colors. The afternoon bell is about to ring at the high school in the nearby town of Eulin. And Elizabeth Rockstad, known as Mrs. Rockstad around here, is winding down her day. Okay, that's it. You guys can head out. It's the end of the day, long day in the classroom, right? Yep. In the meantime, your husband's been at it all day out in the sugar beet field. You guys are busy. Yeah, well, it's, that's part of the farming life, I guess, is it's go, go, go all the time. But certain times of the year, busier than the others. And this is the busy time. This is, yes, this is as busy as it gets, usually. I imagine a lot of the kids in your class, same thing, right? Their parents are probably doing the same thing. Yeah, th well, this whole area is big sugar area, big agriculture area. And um, so, yeah, they're either combining soybeans right now or um, lifting beets, and some are doing both, you know. Back on the Rockstad's farm in Ada, Neil's father is almost finished harvesting a swath of soybeans. That heat shutdown gives Neil an opportunity to check in on other farm business. No, no. From the small towns to the rural countryside, October is sugar beet season in the Red River Valley. And this year, families like the Rockstads look forward to a record harvest. Neil knows that he doesn't have long to linger over lemonade on this warm afternoon. In less than 12 hours, he'll be back at it on the tractor, guided by the moonlight, harvesting sweet beets. 